Hi, I'm Christopher Ray, and welcome to the first of three video lectures about Liu Cixin's novel, The Three-Body Problem. I also recommend that you check out the brief video lecture I made about Liu Cixin and modern Chinese science fiction. In these three video lectures, I'm going to be talking about Volume 1 in the trilogy, The Three-Body Problem. I do not discuss the dark forest or death's end, so no plot spoilers there. But do be sure that you've read all of the three-body problem before you watch these three videos. The problem in the three-body problem has to do with the stars. We keep getting burned up by the stars. We are in a multi-solar universe. So let's just start with the question, what does that mean? Secondly, the three-body problem I would consider to be in the genre not just of science fiction, but of speculative fiction more broadly. And so if we think about sci-fi beyond sci-fi, what are some of the speculations of the three-body problem? One of the ingenious plot devices within the three-body problem is this solar magnification that we're using the power of the sun to project a message into outer space to another civilization. So what are the implications of using that particular type of solar power? Finally, to close this video lecture, I want to point out one peculiarity of the three-body problem and that one of the bodies involved is also the female body. And given that by the numbers at least, science fiction seems to be written predominantly by men, what does it mean when we have a writer of Liu Cixin's stature writing about a pregnant woman pressing that fateful button? The sun is a good thing, right? It's a giver of life. It's something worth singing about. One sun is great. Three suns is a big problem, as explained in the three-body video game that we find within the novel The Three-Body Problem, in which we have a player, Wang Miao, who is in this dialogue with these other avatars, King Wen and Follower. And he says something, and then they stare at each other and then turn and gaze at him as though he were an idiot. The sun? How can the sun tell us the time? We're in the midst of a chaotic era. I would note that Three Body Problem is by no means Liu Cixin's last work about the sun. For example, we have a story in which we have a migrant laborer, someone who is from the countryside, who goes to a town, then he goes to a larger city. Finally, he ends up making it to Beijing. He works for a little while in a coal mine, when he makes it to Beijing, he is spotted on the street by someone who is hiring window washers. So he ends up doing window washing on skyscrapers. The man whom he goes to Beijing with is this scientist and professor who has fallen on hard times, but who has invented this collapsible, essentially solar heating device. And when China launches this project to create a second sun, he realizes that his invention can be used for that purpose. And so he ends up heading this new agency and he hires his friend, the former window washer, to clean it, to keep it clean so that it will re remain shiny and bright and keep bringing heat to the earth. So from peasant to coal miner to shoe shiner to eventually window washer, and then washer in outer space of this giant second sun, after things have been going great and he has essentially already succeeded in his job, he meets in outer space Stephen Hawking, who is a space traveler who is coming to admire the sun of China, or the China sun. The China Sun, as described in the story, is a 30,000 square kilometer reflector. From geosynchronous orbit at an altitude of 36,000 kilometers, it will reflect sunlight onto Earth. Viewed from the surface, it will look like there is another sun in the sky. So there are a couple of interesting things here. One is that the China Sun is not a real sun, the Zhongguo Taiyang Bushu Taiyang. But this is a solar energy plan. So this is kind of the largest solar energy plan that you could imagine. So this is bringing warmth and heat and life to the globe. It is also not just solving an energy problem, it is also solving a water problem. You'll have to read the story to understand what happens. So this is to say that in Liu Cixin's fiction, suns can cause problems, suns can also be solutions, and we can have suns of multiple types. So it's worth thinking about what suns mean and can be. The three-body problem is typically classified as a work of science fiction, and I'd agree with that based on this type of dictionary definition, but I would also consider the three-body problem to be a work of speculative fiction in a broader sense, a sense that encompasses multiple genres and modes. So there's a certain amount of comparability that you can do using the notion of speculative fiction. What if religious fundamentalists took over the United States of America? How would they treat women? What type of a government and society would they create? What if it were almost impossible to distinguish between humans and robots? And what if we couldn't tell if we ourselves were humans or robots? What if robots took over or annihilated the planet and the only survivors of the human race are in some decrepit spaceship in outer space and the robots are trying to finish us off? Maybe this is a more realistic question. What if we could travel to Mars and we did travel to Mars and we left someone behind? In this case, Chinese scientists helped to solve the problem. Then you have all types of counterfactual speculations. What if the Axis powers had won World War II? What would America look like? We can also tie speculation to many different types of divination and prognostication and fortune telling. 
So the Book of Change or the Book of Changes is a very good example of a classical work. It's been canonized as part of the Confucian canon that has inspired many later works of fiction, including The Man in the High Castle and The Three-Body Problem. And that in the three-body problem in the video game, we have a King Wen sequence and a Fu Xi sequence being alluded to. And both of these trace their origin back to the I Ching. So if you want to explore this world, you could do worse than to start with the Internet Speculative Fiction Database, in which you'll find many of the Chinese writers who I mentioned in that video lecture about Liu Cixin and modern Chinese sci-fi. The world of speculative fiction is highly focused on conceits. What if something happened? That's kind of the premise that launches a whole array of plot elements. What if our understanding of reality is fundamentally wrong, like in The Matrix, where everything turns out to be just an illusion and the reality is too horrifying to contemplate? What if we discovered or came into contact with other worlds, realities, universes, or life forms? Would they be hostile? Would they be friendly? How would we coexist with them? What if humans created something that ended up threatening humanity? Of course, that would never happen. What if time travel were possible? And what is time travel anyway? What if humans lose control over something they created? Over the fate of humanity? Over the fate of the Earth? What if there exists a portal to another world or another realm? This is such a common type of speculation that you could call it portal fantasy and apply the term or the concept to The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, or many, many years before that, Peach Blossom Spring, which I discussed in that video lecture about Shun Tso Wen's novella, Border Town. In the case of the three-body problem, I think one of the fundamental speculations is what if chaos ruled the universe? And so this is something that one of our characters wonders aloud at one point. And in different parts of the novel, we have different characters filling us in on the competing ideas about what are the problems attendant on having three suns, say, or three celestial bodies orbiting? And how would they interact with each other? What would be the consequences for life forms? We have a problem of math and physics being projected into this speculative human realm. At one point, you have a description of how a three-sun world, Trisolaris, would exist, and that you would have stable eras and then chaotic eras where you just cannot survive. You essentially just need to hibernate and wait it out. I would mention that there are other tripartite structures that we find in this novel. So, for example, late in the novel, we're told that trisolarian reproduction is essentially another three-body process and which use up two-thirds of the material from these two beings to become fuel to power a biochemical reaction. And then you have a remaining one-third turning into a new body, and then perhaps splitting into three to five different bodies. There is, of course, a different three-body problem in Christian theology, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Within the plot of the three-body problem, it's not just a pure math or physics problem. The issue of sons is also highly political within the context of the Mao era, and the Cultural Revolution specifically. At one point, the Commissar, who is very well attuned to the politics of the era, tells these ignorant scientists, you want to aim a super powerful radio beam at the red sun. Have you thought about the political symbolism of such an experiment? We'll talk a little bit more about the so-called Chinese-ness of the three-body problem in the next video lecture. For now, let's just pause at that fateful moment. This is the doomsday scenario where you have a scientist or someone in the room who presses that button that sets us on an irrevocable course, possibly towards our doom. I would note that in this case, there's something very interesting. There are a couple layers to this here, and that it is a pregnant woman who presses the button. This type of epochal moment of the death of one era and the birth of a new era is one that we see in other works of fiction as well, like Salman Rushdie's novel Midnight's Children, in which the protagonist is born on the stroke of midnight that marks India's independence and the partition of the country. Or you also have the Taiwanese director Hou Xiaoxian's film Beijing Changshi, a city of sadness in which we begin with a childbirth at the moment that the Japanese emperor Hirohito surrenders to the allies at the end of World War II. This is a significant moment in the plot of Three Body Problems, so I think it's worth rereading that passage to look at what happens, and that she sends this message into outer space, and then she kind of steps out into this world where the sun is rising. We have a red sun rising and it dazzles her and it's like the sun causes her to faint. This is the very sun that she has used as a magnifier of her message into outer space. Then the doctor tells her that she's pregnant. Ye was a daughter and a scientist, but now she is also a kind of maternal body. And it's almost like we are being asked to speculate, how did this new body influence the fateful decision of our protagonist? 